Welcome back to Economic Outlook. Today I want to continue my discussion of Hubbard linearization as it relates to United States oil production. Hubbard linearization is important because it allows us to quickly estimate oil field depletion. We'll apply this model to the United States and then see how Hubbard linearization may apply to some of the world's other large oil fields in Saudi Arabia, Russia, and other countries. Hopefully this analysis will help to demonstrate the urgency behind finding alternatives to fossil fuels. I'm going to explain the mathematics behind Hubbard linearization. So if this isn't of interest to you, I would encourage you to skip to the next section, which deals with the implications of the analysis. Now, Hubbard's curve is actually the first derivative of a logistic function. This means that the area under Hubbard's curve represents the total oil that is available to be produced in a country or oil field. The peak of the curve represents the year or time period in which half of all of the oil in the field will have been produced. Because Hubbard's curve represents the total amount of oil in place, it's possible to estimate the percentage of oil remaining in a field at any given point in time using the curve. It's also useful for calculating annual production at any point in an oil field's history. Since Hubbard's curve is the first derivative of a logistic function, the most important piece of information is the total amount of oil in place. If you can estimate the total amount of oil in place, it's possible to build the curve and figure out peaks in annual production. Because of the complexity in Hubbard's analysis, it's easier to use linearization to estimate the total amount of oil in place. This is important because linearization only requires one variable annual production. The first step in the process is to plot the production data as a fraction of cumulative production on the vertical axis. Cumulative production is placed on the horizontal or x-axis. As this chart shows, the relationship between P divided by Q and Q becomes linear as production matures. This linear relationship follows the simple y equals mx plus b format for graphing a line in a plane. Hubbard's logistic differential equation has a linear property. We can exploit this relationship with the linear representation of p over q versus q itself. After the denominator of q becomes significantly large, p over q begins to decline linearly. In the chart of US production, this begins in 1958 and continues all the way to 2007. A simple linear regression for these points yields the important y equals mx plus b equation we need to build our logistic representation of production. In this case, the regression yields the following equation. y equals negative 0.000247x plus 0.0569. One interesting side note on the regression equation is that in this example, the analysis is conducted from 1958 to 2007 with an adjusted R-squared of 98.5%. A logical question you would ask is whether or not this kind of model is possible earlier in the life of a country's oil production. Basically, we want to know if we can construct this early on and if the model would still maintain its validity. The answer, as Hubbard demonstrated, is yes. For example, I ran a linear regression of variables from 1958 through 1978. The results are almost identical. In the first example, the intercept equals 0.0569 and the slope equals negative 0.000247. In the second case, the intercept equals 0.0566 and the slope equals negative 0.000244. This results in an almost identical amount of oil in place. 230.3 billion barrels and 232 billion barrels respectively. The main difference is a reduction in R-squared which falls to 85.7%. This is logical in certainty because fewer data points are used. However, the end results are almost identical. Plotting the line represented by the regression equation gives x and y intercepts. The x-intercept is crucial because this represents the total amount of oil in place, which is what we need to build Hubbard's curve. In this case, the x-intercept estimates that there were about 230 billion barrels of oil in place for the United States. 
The slope in the regression equation is also important. It represents the annual production as a fraction of cumulative production. This completes the set of variables needed to form a production function. The chart to the left shows the translation of the y equals mx plus b equation to the oil production variables. Now I'll do a quick algebraic manipulation to translate the y equals mx plus b equation into a useful oil production function. The regression equation allows us to construct an equation for annual oil production. Remember that P stands for annual production, Q equals cumulative production to date, and Q sub F is the total amount of oil in place. We can substitute these variables into the familiar y equals mx plus b equation and use algebraic manipulation to come up with our annual oil production function. We start by substituting these variables into y equals mx plus b form. Next, we do some manipulation to simplify the right-hand side of the equation. Next, we multiply both sides of the equation by Q to isolate production on the left. Now we rearrange the right-hand side to remove the negative. Finally, to simplify, we factor out a q for both sides of this right-hand side of the equation. This gives us a production function for oil annually. This algebraic manipulation yields an equation for annual oil production. The inverse of this equation gives a measure of time, years per billion barrels. To complete the linearization process and build a Hubbard curve, all you have to do is plot the projected production and this inverse value in one billion barrel increments of cumulative oil production. To add actual years to the plot, look at the actual cumulative production Q and match it to the corresponding value in the model. Then, you just add or subtract 1 over P for values above and below the target year respectively. Now that we understand the mathematics behind Hubbard linearization, it's possible to construct a Hubbard curve for United States domestic oil production. In our next entry, we'll construct this curve and look at some of the fascinating results that we can ascertain.